This video is for my friends who have recently passed their board exam and are lost and don't know what to do now that they are a certified technician. Okay, the first thing you want to do as a certified technician is make sure that you register with your board of pharmacy. Okay, so if you are in Texas, like me, I'm in the great state of Texas. If you're in Texas, then you want to make sure that you register with the Board of Pharmacy for Texas as a certified technician, okay? That's the first thing. So you're going to get your license from the board, okay? Your certification is going to come from PTCB or NHA, depending on who you got your certification through, okay? So those are the two things you want to do. The next thing you need to know is right now, you don't need any CE hours. You've just completed everything. And so your next CE hours won't be due until it's time for you to renew your certification um, as you push through, okay? So in this video, I am going to show you what you need to do in order to be successful as a technician, okay? So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that you know how to do your resumes and also understand what jobs you can apply for, okay? Uh, this video and this free little tip is going to be brought to you by LW Pharmacy School. We bring new and exciting information to our channel every Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m. If you are not a subscriber, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, ring that bell so you can get some notifications, and to stay up to date with what we are doing, okay? Um, if you are looking for inpatient pharmacy technician job, and let's say, you know, you're really good working in the hospital or, you know, for a fact that you don't really want to deal with the public, inpatient positions are very good for you. Um, there are a couple of technician jobs that you can apply for as an inpatient tech. You can be inventory tech, robot filler, IV technician, chemotherapy, all those good things, okay? When you get ready to apply for these jobs, you wanna make sure that you have some retail experience underneath your belt as much as possible, or that you have experience working in the inpatient setting prior to becoming a tech, okay? So if you have those things, that should be good. I do know for IV technicians that you need to become IV certified. So now that you are a certified pharmacy technician, becoming IV certified is a very great thing that you can do. Um, I became IV certified a couple of years ago, and I actually got my certification from Austin Community College, which is one of the best colleges that you can do and pursue your IV technician um, license at. So if you're interested in that, I'll drop the uh, link for Austin Community College where you can kind of get set up with them and possibly gain your IV um, certification. Chemotherapy, you also need to be certified to be a chemotherapy tech. I also know that Austin Community College also offers chemotherapy um, license, okay? And this, I'm not being paid to say any of that. I just want to pass on the information because it helped me, okay? Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is actually being a community technician. So if you are in the community and you want to work as a pharmacy technician, you could be an insurance builder, a retail technician, inventory stock tech, tech recruiter, tech trainer, tech manager, all those fun, fancy things, okay? Um, to be in a community tech, you don't really need a lot of experience in the past, um, basically, but if you have customer service, let's say you worked in retail at the clothing store, or if you have actually, you know, worked with families or people, um, that's always a good plus for you because you have some type of experience serving the public and you are able to go in and just kind of add your skill set to the job that you're going to be in. And so those are some good things too that you want to keep in mind. If you worked at a call center, you know, you have customer service experience from dealing with your customers over the phone. And so never negate, you know, the small things that you've done because those things add up and it really makes you a great tech, okay? This video is not going to be long at all. This, these are quick tips and nuggets. And these are from my friends who have passed the board exam. I have so many friends who passed the board exam. Congratulations and kudos to you. I am super excited. And you know that I'm celebrating with you because I am your biggest fan. 
Um, and so they say, Lindsay, what am I going to do? I'm certified, so on and so forth. And I told them, you know what? I'm going to put some content out there to kind of give you an idea of where you should be headed. You don't have to follow everything that I tell you to do. Um, however, I want to make sure that you know that these opportunities are available to you should you want to take them up, okay? Uh, the next thing that we're going to discuss is entry-level pharmacy tech resume. This part is so fun because this is where you get to list all of your expertise as an individual and what you're going to bring to the table, okay? Remember, when you apply and you are interviewing with these jobs, that you are bringing something to the table just as well as they are. And so just because, you know, they may have the job or whatever, and they may be able to pay you $25 an hour, you're still bringing the skill set. And so they can have the resource, but you are the one with the skill set. And so in actuality, you hold all the cards. Okay, and so you want to make sure that you are marketing yourself as well as you possibly can to land the best opportunity that you can to provide for you and your family. So when you're doing entry level pharmacy tech resumes, you want to make sure that you are listing on there that you are PT PTCB certified or NHA certified. Um, you also want to show where you got your certification from. Um, if you received a diploma because you went through a program like ours, then you want to make sure you put on there that you received a certificate. We don't give diplomas at LW Pharmacy School, but we do give certificates. So you want to make sure that you list that information there as well. You also want to list, you know, um, kind of what you did in the in your course. And so if you had 160 hour pharmacy uh, internship or externship, you want to make sure that's listed as well. Any information that can give the employer an idea of who you are and who they are hiring is going to be very good for you while you're pushing through with this, okay? Um, one of the things I'll tell you is, if you used to work at McDonald's as a fryer, and this is no shade, okay? No shade towards anyone because, hey, we all have to get it how we live. And so if you worked at McDonald's and that worked out for you, or if you worked at the bank and you was on point, that's fine. There's no shade there. However, you want to make sure that as you apply for the medical field, that you are listing jobs that are pertaining to the medical field. So if you worked at McDonald's and you were a fryer, right? and now you're going into the medical field, you have to see how does those jobs relate to each other? You know, maybe you worked as a garbage pickup, you know, maybe you were a garbage man and you picked up garbage um, once a week. Does that really coincide with your pharmacy resume? And so I say all of that to say, please only put on your pharmacy tech resume information that can help the employer feel like they're getting a good candidate, okay? You don't want to overload your inform your resume with a whole lot of information because if you put three pages worth of information on the resume, they don't have a reason to call you. They know everything about you. You want to give them just a little bit so that way they can call you and then when you get into the interview, you can share more information about what you've done in the past, how good you were at your previous job, and how you were able to excel at your current job, okay? Um, you don't need to put all of that on your resume. Resume should not be longer than two pages, and they do not need to be crowded. And, you know, if you have 10 years of experience and, you know, you have all of these bullet points, you may need to limit your bullet points underneath each topic maybe three to four bullet points, because you can overwhelm the, the person, you know, the HR department that's looking at your resume. You're trying to get hired, remember? And so all you need to do is just list enough information to engage them, to pull them in so they can want to call you. And then when they call you, then you can talk about how great you are and all of the things you've done in your lifetime and how you help every person that you know, but that doesn't need to be on your resume. Keep it simple, okay? You don't want to overload your resume with too much information, but you definitely want to make sure that you have your certification on there. If you have become licensed by the board, please put that on there. You want them to know that you are licensed and certified. So being certified and being licensed are two different things. Certification comes from the board that you took your exam through and license comes from your state board, okay? So those are two different things. So you wanna let them know, hey, I'm state licensed and nationally certified like me. 
okay? So that's something that you want to put in there as well. Um, another little tip and nugget is when you send your resume out, make sure that you are following up um, and sending a thank you, you know, uh, letter to them after you get your interview. Also, you want to make sure that you have a cover letter for your resume as well. Okay, so having a cover letter for your resume is also going to be perfect because it kind of gives the person that you are applying to an opportunity to see where you are, you know, and they can kind of understand. It's like an introduction, if you will, okay? Um, resume help. Somebody said, oh my God, you're giving me all this stuff. Where do I get this resume help from? Here are some free links that I got from my Mosby's book, my Mosby's Pharmacy Technician 5th Edition book that talks about some of the information or places where you can get free resume help from, okay? Look at these links, check them out, reach out to the people. You know, I haven't gone through them all, I will be honest with you, but I have clicked on them and they do work, okay? So give me a, a, a you know, give me, give me some room to read, okay? Um, but yeah, click on those links and like reach out to those people and let them know, you know, where you are or research throughout the website yourself. You know, sometimes you guys just don't want to do the work and that's some of the issue too, but that's a whole nother story for another time. So we won't get into that, but make sure that you are looking through and applying yourself as much as you possibly can. These links can be very helpful for you. Now that you got your resume together, it's time to start applying for jobs, okay? The first spot that I would tell you to start is at LinkedIn. Oh my God, LinkedIn is the bomb.com. You can put a picture up, you can put your resume on LinkedIn. You can also like tap like the little tab or whatever that says that, hey, I'm currently looking for a position and that you are in a position where you can be hired. A lot of pharmacy tech recruiters are on LinkedIn and they're always looking for technicians. And so remember as a paraprofessional, because that's what you are as a pharmacy tech, you are a paraprofessional. Um, we have recruiters who actually look for jobs for us. And so if you're doing this job search all by yourself, oh my God, you're doing it completely wrong. You went through everything you went through to have the perks and all of the amenities that come with being a certified technician. Use them, make them work for you. You're working a little too hard, okay? So LinkedIn is gonna be where you wanna start, okay? The next thing that you wanna make sure is that you build a profile on Indeed. Indeed is like really, really fun. It's very simple, it's easy to use, and it does not require you to be a genius when it comes to websites and like posting everything, okay? Now on Indeed, you cannot put a picture up there and at least I don't think you can, um, but it's still a great place to start. They have a lot of jobs that they list all the time, and I appreciate LinkedIn as well as Indeed because I use them a lot um, for a lot of different things. And then there's a lot of other, you know, links on here too that you can click on and post your resume, create profiles, be proactive. The holidays are coming up. We want Christmas and Thanksgiving to be like really, really fun. Okay. Last but not least, the future for pharmacy technicians is so bright, like bright, bright. Okay. So with that being said, don't sleep on your certification. I know too many people who are certified and they're like, well, it didn't really work out for me and I'm not really doing anything with it. What did you go to school for? Why did you go and take this test? Why did you pay this oh, $129 or whatever? I don't have the type of money just to give away. And I'm not giving it away to a board that doesn't even know me. And then I get my certification and I don't do anything with it. It's like, who does that? So with that being said, you want to make sure that you are being proactive and that you get on this gravy chain, gravy train. Sorry, get on the gravy train, okay? I can't even say it right now because I'm super excited about all of the opportunities that come with being a tech. I've been a tech for over 10 years now in the perks and the stability that it has brought to me and my family has blessed us tremendously. And so if you are interested in trying to really, really build your career as a technician, I urge you to look at those links that I put in here, as well as look at the resume, you know, and if you drop a comment in this video and say, Lindsay, I did all that and it still didn't work, I will help you, you know, now, I will help you as much as I can, but you have to help yourself. 
um, everyone knows that if you make a comment on the, on my videos, I respond to you very quickly as soon as I get it. And so if you say, Hey, this didn't work out, whatever, whatever, what is something I can do? I'll make sure this keep sending you tips and nuggets. And if you want to keep seeing videos like this, drop a comment below and, you know, say, Hey, let's keep it going. And I'll make sure, you know, that I continue to bring the content to you guys that you want to hear and see. Okay. So again, this is for my friends who have just become certified pharmacy technicians and are ready to take it to the next level. Um, remember that when you get ready to recertify, whenever your time comes, you want to have 20 CE hours, okay? I urge you, now that you are certified, please join some organizations as a technician. Those organizations will help you get your CE hours done a lot of times for free because your monthly dues or your yearly dues would have covered your CE hour payments, right? And so I'm a part of several different organizations for, for that reason. And then some other reasons. It's good to network and it's good to be around like-minded people who are technicians like you. You're coming into a new world and you want to embrace it and in, introduce it into your life in a very joyful way. Okay, so I really encourage you to be a part of as many organizations as you possibly can be and make pharmacy technician work for you. You've chosen this career and you're on the right path. Okay, so until next time, you guys have a wonderful day and continue to look at um, my videos. And if you need anything else, please let me know. Thank you. See you again. Bye.